Today I've got a really special guest. I am excited to be doing this video. It's been a while coming. You asked for it, so here it is. Um, this is Blake, my husband. We're talking about his story today, which it is a um, very amazing story that he has had and a long journey back to health. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. <music> To begin with, I just want to go ahead and give you a little bit of background. So November, uh, mid-November 2019, it was around November 17th, I started a plant-based diet. We both knew that we needed to make some dietary changes in order to better our health. And I had been looking at doing a plant-based diet because I thought that, that would be the best option for us to lose weight and solve a lot of health problems that we were having. Um, now, he was a bit resistant. He did not want to do a plant-based diet, uh, much less any other kind of diet. He was perfectly fine with the status quo. He did know that he needed to lose weight and make some healthier changes, but he wasn't quite ready to jump on board. And then he got a upper respiratory infection somewhere in the mid in mid-November, and it just started out kind of mild. Um, and then it quickly progressed, and we didn't really know what was going on. There were some weird things going on. Um, he had gone to the doctor several times, and they could never pinpoint <coughs> what it was. And now this was before all of the, the COVID information had been released, and we're not really sure if it was that. I mean, that early on or not. Um, we do know that he had a lot of the symptoms. Uh, actually, did you oh. have all of the symptoms uh, that COVID uh, com that comes with COVID. So... We will never know because um, they weren't testing for that at that point in time. We went into the emergency room the first time because, like Cass said, he'd been to the doctor about three times. And finally, the last doctor's visit, our primary was like, well, I've done everything I can do to help you. He had been given breathing treatments. He felt like he couldn't breathe. He had been he was on antibiotics, and he had been given steroids. And... Um, did he, what else did he do? Was that about everything? You had had a shot, I think. I had a couple shots. Yeah. They tested me for flu, everything out there, and everything came back negative. And what were you feeling whenever you were going through all of this? Because it, it was like it was more than an upper respiratory infection because you could barely get out of bed at that point. Very lethargic. Um, no taste, no smell, no appetite. Um, I'd go for days without eating um, and breathe. I felt like I was drowning. And um, they put me on a nebulizer, and that seemed to make it even worse. So, like, at, whenever you were at the emergency room the first time, though, they did a bunch of tests, and they did some blood work. And in your blood work, the D-dimer was elevated in your blood, and that can be an indication of clots. Like it's and because usually, I had such trouble breathing, they thought I might have had a pulmonary embolism. Yes. The blood got in my lungs. So they did some kind of scan on your lungs. What was that? Couldn't find anything. There was nothing in there, and so they said for you to go, you could... Follow so, up with a go home and follow up with a pulmonologist. So we were going to go ahead and follow up with a pulmonologist, and then you were back in the emergency room the very next day. Yeah, yeah the next day or the following day from that. <laughs> because it was just like getting worse, and you felt like you literally felt like you were on my way out. You ended up doing your blood work up again, and it was a different emergency room doctor. So this time we found out that the D dimer was elevated and. You had elevated liver enzymes, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so what happened after that? You were transported to by ambulance to an a, another hospital to mm -hmm. a specialty hospital, and they admitted you. Mm -hmm. And then we did like a bunch of tests. Yep, I did blood work. They did CAT scans, um, X-rays, the whole nine yards. And they finally diagnosed me with Bud Chiari syndrome, uh, which is a major blood clot in my hepatic vein in my liver. We'll never know what caused it. And it's a, literally like a one in a million disease. So um, it's very rare. 
There's not a lot of doctors out there that um, deal with or treat Bud Chiari syndrome. Um, but at that point in time, we found out some really scary news that you were actually in liver failure. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a very hard and shocking time. We did not know what that meant, what we were facing. What also, uh, cirrhosis of the liver uh, caused by the Bud Chiari, the, hip, the blood clot, um, the you know advanced liver damage. Now they're not really like sure like about the cirrhosis because they haven't done a liver biopsy yet. But from what they can see on the scans, there appears to be a bit of cirrhosis mm -hmm. in some places. But it's all caused from the blood clot. So what happens whenever you have a blood clot like that? Blocked my hepatic vein, so the blood was not get coming out of my liver. So my liver was getting congested. So it actually reversed the blood flow in my liver. In the hospital, my enzyme levels are just through the roof. I don't even remember what they were in the thousands. Yeah, 1100, uh, I think. And they're supposed to be between like 20 and 40 or something. Yeah, somewhere around 40. Um, two different ones they were watching. They were yeah, watching. I'm like on the verge of death. And they say that most people that have this type of blood clot normally don't survive it. And that I was very lucky. Fast forward to um, coming out of the hospital. I ended up staying through the hospital through Christmas. Uh, I get to come home a few days after Christmas. It's basically, they just send me home and tell me to, you know, I get to change my diet. They put me on blood thinners because of the blood clot. Um, you know, put me on a low-sodium diet. Now, why are you on a low-sodium diet? The water retention. Uh, the liver is not filtering out like it's supposed to. So, you know, if I if I eat a lot of salt and sodium, my body holds on to fluid because it's, it's not able to do its job correctly. They put me on water pills and diuretics and Lasix um, to help get move some of the fluid off of me. My diet, you know, I, I basically... Um, pretty much go vegan because I, they've told me in the hospital, you know, you can can't eat red meat, you can't eat pork, um, limit chicken and fish, no raw food, so no sushi, uh, no raw oysters, no anything. Very tough emotionally uh, and mentally because I had to completely change my lifestyle. Um, and I, I battled myself with that for a long time and still do sometimes. Uh, I get very mad at the situation at times when there's certain things that I want that I can't have. Um, and uh, she's been my rock because, you know, sometimes she she takes it, you know, and I don't I don't mean to, um, I don't, I'm not taking it out on her. I get mad at the situation, not at her. So we've we've learned to make changes, you know. My numbers started getting better. Uh, my liver enzymes steadily started going down. Um, so the the water pills were helping. I seem to be getting better. Uh, I'm on the warfarin, the coumadin, whatever you want to call it. And um, so uh, they just keep telling me, just keep doing like you're doing, keep doing like you're doing. We're having like regular checkups. Regular checkups, getting hired... blood work done once a once a week. Okay. We hired a registered dietitian, um, and she really helped us out a lot. You had the sodium restrictions. You had the di other dietary uh, restrictions that you needed to watch. Um, um, certain things that you needed to eat. You were taking warfarin, and then there's so many interactions that you take on that blood that that blood thinner you have to watch for that will interact and cause the blood thinner to either be too much or too little. Um, and then with the water pills we had to watch out for potassium retention too so we were looking at like an insane situation as far as diets went so plant based we had to make sure that we were eating the same amount of green foods because one of the things with warfarin is that the vitamin k in the green foods make your blood thicker after we had some um follow-ups we went in to see the surgeon at our first hospital 
that was part of the liver uh, transplant team. Wait, when we went in and talked to the surgeon, what was the news that we were told? Um, that he basically wanted me to get a liver transplant. Not expecting that whenever we went in to talk to him and we have a ton of questions and it was a really hard day because mm. that was such shocking and emotional. Yeah, like that's like, a, I mean, like you think about getting a brand new organ. It's just a really, really big deal. And it was. Are you going to survive it? You know, what's the survival rate? You know, all that kind of stuff, you know. And I never felt that sick, you know, at that point in time. But I'm not expecting that news because I'm, I'm feeling better. Uh, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm getting better and they keep telling me that. You know, your numbers are improving, you're you're doing good, and then all of a sudden the surgeon says, oh, you need a liver transplant. So it was just a real major shock. Yeah, and then somebody that I used to work for, one of her friends, knew of this other doctor, and she was like, hey, I think you should check out this doctor. Um, he's really, really good. So we did, and he's actually in Houston. And so we were like, okay, let's go get a second opinion and see... Um, we heard a lot, so many good things about uh, this doctor. So we did. We went and got a second opinion. And whenever we talked to him, it was like night and day. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, <clears throat> just fell in love with him right off the bat. Um, you know, just his uh, bedside manner, uh, the whole demeanor, his outlook on everything was just so positive. And as we left the office, I told Stormy, I said, we're, we're changing doctors, you know. So we ended up going with him, and he basically told me at one point that he's, he was glad that I came into his life because it made him rethink the way he treats Bud Chiari patients and that he's going to completely rewrite, rewrite his treatment on Bud Chiari treat, uh, patients. Um, now, did he think that you needed a liver transplant? No. After leaving his office, he basically said, you know, let's just keep everything the same, doing what you're doing, um, as far as diet and everything goes. Um, you know, I, he still wanted to, meet, he wanted to update my tests, and so I had to get MRIs, CAT scans, and that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, we continue with the diet. I'm losing, I'm steadily losing weight. Um, you know, back when I was in the hospital in December and I originally got diagnosed, they also told me that I was diabetic. So we had, that was also another dietary restriction mm. that we had. So we had to watch his sugar as well. Yeah. So um, my primary care doctor that I go to every week to have blood work drawn, that I was no longer diabetic. And why you had lost how much? How I much lost weight? eighty pounds, and uh, I have completely reversed my diabetes. Um, they told me that my A one C had been holding steady uh, for quite some time. So he had told me that in all of his years in practice, he's never had a patient. To actually reverse diabetes. He was actually pretty excited to give you a call and yeah. tell you that yeah, he you was. were no longer diabetic. Yeah, he called me at, he called me at home. I didn't even see him in the office. He just called me on my phone. He said, I've got some really great news. He said, you're, he said, we've been watching your A1C and all that stuff every time you come in and get blood work. You know, we always check everything. And um, he said, he said, you, you're not diabetic anymore. That was a huge win, especially mm -hmm. since we're dealing with a liver disease. Yep. That's just one huge worry that is no longer on your plate. Mm -hmm. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that we can accredit that victory. No, it's all to diet. To a plant-based diet, mm -hmm. for real. Yeah. And um, so, uh, holding steady with what we were doing um the diet the diuretics and lasix basically kind of stopped working so i'm holding on the liver i mean holding on to <laughs> holding on the fluid and uh so we go in I was concerned with the fact that i was 
retaining fluid. He said it's time to do a TIPS procedure. And so what is a TIPS procedure? They go in through your jugular vein in your neck, go down through your heart, and put a stent in in your liver to bypass the blood clot, which is what they did to me. Immediately after surgery, the pressure on my liver went from like 40 something down to like eight or nine something like that it was actually is actually dropped below what normal pressure on a liver should like, be. yeah he said like normal pressure is around 10 to 12 or something like that yeah, i know, can't like remember not... what it was but he said that mine was actually better than his was after my surgery uh, immediately my blood pressure dropped um because i've always kind of had high blood pressure uh, but my blood pressure went from being high around 140 over 90 average to I'm like in like 110 over 70 now. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense like because it's just like plumbing, you know, mm -hmm. like. And all that out, the pressure immediately has dropped on my liver. My liver has actually started regenerating new growth. So my liver is actually getting healthier. And we're just using a plant-based diet to maintain health. We've had um, a lot of wins already, you know, with him uh, losing the weight, reversing diabetes. And we truly both feel like this is like the healthiest way that he can eat. How do you feel about a plant-based diet now that you've been doing it for over I, uh, a year? Um... I'm a lot happier with it now than I was in the beginning. I fought tooth and nail in the beginning against it, you know, because it was it was such a major life change. Um, and it wasn't like a decision you came to like on your own. Like, right. It wasn't a, a hey, I want to do this. It's hey, you got to do this, you know. And I don't I don't take to people telling me what to do very well. Um, That's true. So um, I'm kind of hard headed, but um, but I've learned to love it, um, and I'm I. I can definitely feel the difference you know from it um, and you know I would recommend anybody doing it especially anybody that's got any kind of health issues or if you just want to lose weight and get healthier um, you know even if you don't need to lose weight you just want to get healthy um, there's not a better way to do it uh, you know there's no diet pills out there that's gonna do it for you they're not gonna make you healthy they're, you know, they may help you lose weight, but it's not in a healthy way. Um, I, so I definitely recommend anybody do it. And it, it, there's so many options and so many things that you can do with it. It's, it's mind-blowing, you know, the options out there. And just because it is plant-based or vegan or vegetarian doesn't always mean that it's healthy. So yeah. <laughs> he's learned that. Um, so you you know you you need to pick and choose your battles, you know. Um, sometimes we we do have little cheats, you know, where you know I get to craving breakfast sausage, so you know we'll buy Beyond sausage patties, which is a plant-based patties. But I know that's not very healthy. Um, so it's something we do very you know once in a blue moon. Um, but you know it, it's mostly you know just simple plant-based cooking and that's you know most of the time that's the best stuff out there does it taste good it tastes wonderful and learning to eat without salt was a very 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 hard <laughs> thing to do um but you know over time your taste change and you know i've learned to to just you know i've learned to eat foods without it and to me when i when i eat stuff that's got a lot of salt in it now i can't even eat it because it's just too salty, it doesn't taste good. It's crazy how that <clears throat> happens, and it does take a little while to adjust to no salt. It's hard starting out, but you can do it, and uh, and it's everybody actually needs to change the amount of sodium that they uh, eat on a daily basis. Because you would your mind would be blown if you really knew how much sodium was in all the foods that you ate. Yeah, his story is far from over. Um, but Just beginning. He, he's doing a whole lot better. Uh, things are, you know, we have a good outlook. We're positive, optimistic. We are living our lives uh, thankful and grateful. Well, what keeps me going is you and our three-year-old son. You know, and 
if it wasn't for y'all, I don't know where I'd be right now. Well, we feel the same way, and I just, he's had an incredible story. He's overcome so much, and he's a very disciplined with his plant-based diet and lifestyle, um, and he really enjoys that. And I just, I wanted to share this with you because this is kind of out of the norm. Um, and he was able to do a lot of great things for his health with a plant-based diet. And I had talked to y'all about it. And whenever I shared my story, and my story pales in comparison to what he has overcome and been through. And I knew that maybe if there were other people out there struggling with major health problems, um, looking to, you know, find something healthier. Now, we, like I said, we did work with a registered dietitian. And if you have a major health problem, that may be something that you need to look at because as Dr. McDougall says that diet is powerful medicine and um, he was being monitored. Blood work was being watched. Um, so they always knew what was going on um, as he was losing weight, diabetes, uh, always monitoring his blood sugar levels and all of that kind of stuff so it wasn't like we were just flying by the seat of our pants so i don't want to make it sound like you should just switch to a plant-based diet if you have a lot of medical problems because that may not be the case for you and you may need to be under supervision and see your doctor like i totally recommend talking to your doctor about that especially if you have major health problems but we just wanted to share his story i'm really thankful that you shared your story and i know that is going to make an impression and probably help a lot of other people. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can relate to overcoming difficulties like that. So thank you so much. So if you like this, if you stayed with us this long, please uh, drop a comment below and let us know what your biggest um, lifestyle change has been uh, on a plant-based diet. If and you got any questions, um, I'm an open book. So, uh, you know, ask ask anything you want, um, and I'd be more than happy to answer it for yeah, you. Yeah, we'll definitely be checking out the comments <coughs> below, and uh, he can check out the comments too. So if you have any questions that you want to ask him, um, we'll get to it. Just let us know. And as always, thanks so much for watching.